Okay, let's, let's leave the house lights on. What was Karen Pine saying before lunch? Do, don't just mean it. Are you still here? Hello. Let's see some house lights. You're going to do something right now. So I've got 37 minutes. This is the timer thing here, by the way. Uh, 36.42 I have left. I've wasted 18 seconds of your time. So let's have some house lights on. I want to see from you who here ever has ever seen an improv show. Hands up. Quite a few of you. Gosh, loads of you. Okay. I didn't say put them down, did I? Don't, don't conform. Alexander is evil. Conform to what I say. It's a bit like, the, the, I was thinking, this is, uh, you can put them down now, but I'll ask them in a minute. This is a bit like the Glastonbury of business, isn't it? Don't you feel like that? Yeah? It's a, it's a, you know, uh, well, there'll be some naked people later along and, and people in stilts. And I also, I'm feeling, you know, a bit of a defender for, you know, evil corporate capitalism. There should be somebody here, shouldn't there? Next year, I want you some, somebody from Canary Wharf. Can we get somebody to come and say, well, actually, we do have, under, we, we do have meaning. We're not just evil. I noticed a lot of the people talking today, if I'm just going to challenge you a little bit, uh, are talking, criticizing capitalism, but are working for the companies that we might criticize. But we think we, we, we might change this one person, one team at a time. Interesting to hear that the, the US Army, for example, is looking at things that in a much deeper way than as outsiders we might have imagined. They're just coming now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the PRISM program, malarkey. Malarkey's my real name, Neil Malarkey. That's, my website is neilmalarkey.com, so say hello, please. So uh, hands up if you've seen an improv show, and then I can just get a sense of, of what's going on here. So there's a lady down there. Hello, in, in the white, what's your name? Anna, Anna okay. Why, why is that noise happening? Is it me, or is it the devil? <laughs> okay, Anna, we, yeah, we met earlier. Who, over here, let's have a look, because I'm going to just find out what happens, yes? Bob, of course you have. You're a Scottish person. So... Uh, <laughs> Over there, sir. You, uh, yes, I know you're, you're from NM. Hands up over there. Over there. I want to, there's a man there with your phone on, right there. I'm pointing at you. Wave at me. Oh, or maybe it's a lady. I can't, I can't see very well because uh, I've got astigmatism, so my left eye can't see very well. So uh, you're waving at me right now. What's your name? Helen. Hello, Helen. Oh, God, what a lovely voice. And Helen, where did you see an improv show? Uh, the and what happened in the show? Uh, lots of people threw things at each other. Lots of people threw things at each other. Okay. Um, that's not... Oh, you mean throw ideas? No, no, objects. Real objects, okay. <laughs> Was this just a fight in a bar? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Who ever seen the Comedy Store Players, the, part of, uh, the, the group I'm part of? Yes, Tom has. Anyone? <laughs> There's a lady there, hello. And you, you just put your hand up, hello. You with a stripiness. What's your name? Caroline. Caroline, what did you remember about the Comedy Store Players? What happens in the show? For those who've never seen an improv show, Caroline, because who, who's never seen a show? Hands up. Because when I first heard about improv, you're probably thinking, who is this idiot? But also, I first thought, well, what happens is the audience gives a suggestion to the performers, and then they say, oh, launder it, thank you very much. Uh, that reminds me of the scene I was in in a garage. <laughs> and you cheat it. And, no, and then I met a man called Mike Myers. Anyone heard of Mike Myers? <laughs> so he's Shrek, Austin Powers, Wayne's World. And he said, no, there's this thing that's been around since the 1920s, improv. I call it improv because it's a particular form of performance, a form of being, a form of thinking, of relating. And it started with a social worker called Viola Spolin in Chicago, and she was helping children who were a bit diffident in school to help them be more confident with their language skills, their creativity. And he said, this is how it works. And so, Caroline, what do you remember of how, what the show, what happened in the show? Okay, what ha the audience will give us suggestions and then we act out scenes, is that right? Yes. Okay, and uh, how many people were on stage? Four or five. Four or five, yes. I always ask that, just to be sure. There are actually six. <laughs> people often say four. It's interesting how the perception is. You know, perception is not always entirely accurate. But uh, what I will tell you, though, is that we have this idea of the offer. An offer in improv is something that's vital. It, you, there's a thing over there was about conversation being the first unit, the smallest unit of change. Well, I think even within a conversation, what's called an offer. Uh, John Gottman, the psychotherapist, might say that it's a bid for connection. I'm opening myself up to you by saying something. And now, well, does that sound too strange? Hopefully not in this environment where we've talked a lot about mindfulness being in the moment, real listening. But I'll give you an example. For example, if we ask the audience for a suggestion, uh, give us a, who has seen the uh, improv show over here? Are you there? What's your name, madam? Nancy. Nancy. 
uh, the, you, you know, uh, we might ask for a suggestion, they might ask for a hospital, something like that, Nancy, and then you get two people up on stage, and uh, one will say, uh, they're hospital, 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 uh, good morning, doctor. So that's the offer. The offer is doctor. I'm putting it out there for you to receive, and I'll say, good morning, nurse. So my offer is nurse, okay? So we build up one step at a time. We trust the process. Just like in Gore, we assume trust. We've never played with each other, perhaps, but we assume trust. We presume trust. We don't need to work together uh, for years on end and go on away days and get drunk together and <laughs> naked. We just say, <laughs> I trust you. Or it may go, good morning, doctor. And the other person will say, good morning, Mr. Johnson. I see your legs better. So the offer then is patient, leg. This person thinks, what do I do with that? Legs better, football. Yes, I'm playing football again. And this person says, yes, and I heard you scored three goals at the weekend. Okay, easy. Everyone understand, Nancy? <laughs> Nancy's gone away. Uh, <laughs> Helen, there's no throwing in this type of improv, but maybe we'll find out. Compare that with, good morning, doctor. And this person says, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> we have a technical term for that in improv. It's called a block. Has anyone ever been blocked at work or at home? <laughs> what does it mean for you? When somebody doesn't pick up your thread, you put yourself out there, here you are, here's an idea, here's a thing, oh no. The energy stops, thank you, Tom. Rejection, yeah. So the thing is, when I ask people about this, they'll say, uh, they'll say one or two things. They'll either say, oh, that person's a rotter, a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> Horrid. Or they'll say, oh, no, it was my fault. My offer wasn't good enough. These are both rationally valid, aren't they? It's interesting how many people say, oh, it was my fault. I wasn't good enough. And, of course, actually, in improv, our whole ethos is to say, how can I make the other person look good? This is the essence of collaboration, which is applicable in every walk of life, in every business, in every organization. How can I make the other person look good? How can I justify their offer? How can I make them enjoy themselves? So what do we do at Gore? We make a profit, but we also have some fun doing it. That's how collaboration works. But on the other hand, a lot of improv, you will find people sort of misfiring or going in different directions, and that joy of the diversity of different ideas is what gives improv its energy. The great improviser will say, okay, that feels like a block. Good morning, doctor. I'm not a doctor. You want to go, you bastard, I hate you. <laughs> Go and see the improv teacher now. <laughs> Block boy. <laughs> but you've, you notice that? You deal with that? Remember, what, what does uh, Damasio say? Where are you? He says, we, we, are, we are feeling machines, machines who try and think. You say, I feel rejected. I feel ignored. I, I feel you're the bad guy or I'm the wrong person. But I'm going to notice it and say, how can I frame what feels like a block as an offer? Good morning, doctor. I'm not a doctor. Well, I'm not a patient either. <laughs> but I see you every day with your white coat coming to the hospital, and I'm here too, isn't it fun? <laughs> and you could, you could have a whole story about these imposters wandering around the hospital <laughs> that could be more interesting than the more conventional scene implied earlier. Remember what Stefania said about you use what's there. You use what's actually there. You pay attention to what's really there, what Albert Einstein said as quoted by the Levies, or what's actually there, rather than saying, oh dear, uh, this isn't very good, I want to think outside the box. Improvisers say, what's in the box already? <laughs> in fact, another friend of mine, Steve Shapiro, creativity expert, says, get a new box. <laughs> Any metaphor is obviously <laughs> going to run out of steam at some point, but improv, we say, what do we have now? We don't have much electricity, how do we deal with that? Uh, we have, we've got all the wrong people, they're idiots, schmucks, I'm the best one. How do we deal with that? <laughs> we look at it again. Okay, I think we want to play this game, don't we? Let's play a game. So, so Nancy, Helen and Caroline, come on down. Give them a big round of applause. <laughs> come on down, come on down. Come on, come on, come on. Up here. Okay. So, uh, Nancy, thank you very much. Um, oh, there you go. That's Helen, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, Caroline, keep coming, keep coming. Come upstage, you've got to come up here. They're going to tell a story one word at a time. Have you ever worked together, you three? No. Have you ever met each other? No. You're a collaborative team in the making. <laughs> you trust the process. You presume trust. 
In fact, I'm going to give you credibility as well. I've done this before with people, and they're marvelous. OK, come forward, trust each other, really listen. Actually, what's the first rule of improv? To listen. It's not, oh, I've got some great ideas on my own that'll show you up. It's, how can I pick up your offers, accept your offers, listen? And I, I was interested to hear about the Levy's, but attention and intention. People talk about active listening. In improv, I call it intentive listening. Do you think I can move to California? <laughs> Listening with intent. I'm intending consciously to use something that you have given me in the way that I respond. Now, of course, in the real world, it's not as easy as doctor, nurse. The offer may be an unconscious one in the way you say something, your nonverbal offer, your unconscious offer of what you don't say or what you imply or actually what this person hears. The offer is often in the eye, the heart of the beholder. But that diversity is creative. So, here we go. We're going to do a story. The story is the day I went to the zoo. But, so what's going on here in their minds right now? There's somebody going, oh, no, I know nothing about zoos. <laughs> I'm going to be shown up. I must quickly go Google zoos, Wikipedia, zoo stuff, because <laughs> I'm, I'm the queen of content. On the other hand, there's somebody over here saying, oh, look, I know all about zoos. I'm full of zoo stuff. I go to the zoo all the time. Hey, and their problem is they know too much about the subject. They can't unsee what it is for somebody who doesn't understand zoos or who doesn't know much about zoos. And, of course, a great team is one that has different technical expertise, perhaps. In fact, John Maynard Keynes said, it may be easy to learn something new. It's harder to unlearn something old. Remember what Mark Stevenson said to us this morning uh, about those of us who are over 35 it's hard for us to learn things, and actually, I'll get really annoyed with people who are young. Uh, <laughs> discover that many people don't even wear a watch who are of, under a certain age. Uh, my children don't believe me when I say, well, we had two phones in the house, one downstairs, one upstairs, both connected to the wall. And I think, and, they, <laughs> yeah. and were there dinosaurs? Uh, so on the earth, so one knows nothing, one knows everything. On the other hand, there's somebody in the middle. There we are, Helen, maybe. She's a great improviser. She's thinking, look, I've done some zoo work. <laughs> I'm familiar with the ideas of zoos. I'm going to leverage my zoo understanding in this complex, socially adaptive system. <laughs> if you want the business school jargon, but we don't have to have it. OK, so what was the title of the zoo? Can you remember? I want my day at the zoo. I went to the my day, I went to the zoo. Yes, Caroline? Oh, sorry. <laughs> have, we, have we started? No, we haven't, oh. but I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just testing. Okay, just, just notice that you're probably not going to give your best like that. So come stand, stand forward. Okay, come together so you've got a little peripheral vision as well, because we listen, we listen with our bodies as well as with our ears. So why don't you start to get into a rhythm with, I went to the zoo, just to get into a rhythm. Off you go. I went to the zoo. <laughs> there was a small, amazing... Zebra. Named. Pardon me. Named. Georgia. O'Keefe. <laughs> Full stop. I. I wondered whether Georgia was really as fun as she told me. <laughs> And then, <laughs> horrifyingly, <laughs> Georgia fell over <laughs> the hippo. Excellent work. Really good. OK. Really good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. That's really wonderful. Thank you. Stay there, though. Stay there. Stay there. It's going really well. That's fantastic. What they're doing is they are listening. They're trying to work with each other. They're obeying the rules of grammar because we need a bit of structure, actually. <laughs> and they're not trying to do the one word that wins everything. They're working together. They're really collaborating, aren't you? Now, of course, you may have an agenda. Who's Georgia O'Keefe? <laughs> and is she likely to sue? That's all I'm worried about. Uh, why did you say zebra? Because of your black and white stripes. Of course. <laughs> Of course, you see, that's why I chose you. <laughs> Bad top. But look how easy it is to be influenced by that. Who? Uh, 
uh, you know, for example, Nancy, were you thinking of a particular animal? A giraffe. Giraffe, but it wasn't mentioned because these two are losers. They just don't understand. <laughs> so, so, Nancy, how did it feel to not get giraffe in? It wasn't that bad. I was okay with the zebra. You were okay. That's okay. That's fine. So, you see, we, a friend of mine who works in advertising often uses this in meetings to start off with. We all come with our own stories, our own favorite animals, and can we create one story together that all of us own but none of us can claim sole authorship of? So collaboration is difficult because did you have a, an animal in mind? Hippo. You, which you said. <laughs> but which I knew I couldn't say hippopotamus without embarrassing myself, so it went hippo. You just did <laughs> and didn't embarrass them. So. There you go, how lovely. So who here was thinking of another animal? Lion, monkey, pig? Okay. So you can't help but think of something. But the, I, the improviser says, OK, that's what I'm thinking, but I'm going to be really in the moment. I know I'll, I'll think of one step ahead, but I can just leave that for a moment and see what's emerging here. You can live comfortably with this ambiguity, because we live in a Baruka world. <laughs> what, what is it? Is it, is it, is it Vuka. Oh, Vuka, Vuka, that's it. What is it? Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Because I was thinking, you know, if it was a Veruca well, what, what would the E and the R, what would the E and the R stand for, you know? Eggheadery, wrongheadedness, righteousness. So, and also, I want to move this M, don't you? And then it'll be Ein Mang. Uh, and it, what's the German for, what, what, what does Mang mean in German? We don't know. Never mind. So what I want you to do now is to just turn around, get into little uh, groups of three or four, turn around, get right to it, because I've got a few of my 37 minutes left, and you're going to do a story, which is the day I went to the airport, the day I went to the airport. You're going to carry on just here without the mics, just to see how it feels, because you're nicely warmed up. Turn around, off you go. The day, so start with, I went to the airport. Go. OK. Good. So. Uh, let's just hear, let's just hear from you. I want to hear what happened because many things are happening. There's the content. Is it a good story? There's the process. We trust the process. Remember, Stefania told us to trust the process. My friends at Ashridge Business School use improv as a, as a metaphor, as actually a directly applicable technique for strategy because strategy isn't we must start here and go there. It's much more messy than that. We often, as Kierkegaard said, we live our lives forward, we understand them backwards. In hindsight, you realize the offers you thought were blocks, or blocks you thought were offers, turned out to be, in hindsight, a way of helping you. And what offer it was for that soldier to meet Coley. What was he called? Coley. Coley is, means light at the end of the tunnel. How beautiful. And isn't it marvelous that Veruca means wake up? <laughs> Vuka, Vuka. Vuka. Uh, and there's a gentleman over there. I've just given you a mic. Would you mind standing up? Because you look rather demure, I must say. So uh, what's your name? Oh, he's going to fall over. Uh, what, what's your name? Hi, my name's Ian. Ian. And you're, he's on the red mic. Uh, Ian, what happened in your story? Because this lady next to you was going <laughs> to... Well, um, we, we, you can't we, breathe. I'm sorry. It's because you said knickers. Is that right, Ian? That, it, that Can you tell the us the end. context of knickers? So, so we, we tried to trust the process. Um, <laughs> we went slightly wrong because we started playing word association instead of telling the story. However, once we got beyond that, I think we got beyond that, um, we got to a story of the bag got lost, and, but we were okay because we hand carried certain things, including toiletries, and then I suggested we might hand carry knickers, which okay. seemed too... Can everyone hear what Ian's saying? Okay, he's just kind of a loose lounge singer. Oh, we did this. Uh, you, it's fine. You could do it a bit nearer. So let me ask you this, Ian. No, you that? said knickers because you thought, oh, knickers, you saw that. Or did you think, oh, hang on, this story needs a bit of spicing up. I'm stuck well, with these losers. I need... Say again? There's a bit of rebel in all of us. So. No, there isn't. <laughs> just you. Okay, give it a round of applause. Thank you. And Matt... Matt, Matt, can you retrieve his mic? Can you retrieve his mic, Matt? Matt is going to be my mic uh, monkey. So, <laughs> talking of monkeys, who had a, who had a character uh, uh, or an animal, thank you, from the zoo come up in your airport? <laughs> yes. 
because there was a, there's a legacy issue, isn't there? Who was, you might not know it, you're thinking, oh, in that zoo, why didn't they say the thing that I wanted them to say? Because a zoo is quite a big image. How many times does that happen? How many times in your meetings are people thinking a whole bunch of other things compared with what you think they're thinking? And, and, and I, found, I read this the other day. In 40%, 40% of meetings, it tends to be people saying what most people in the meeting already know. How many of your meetings are just kind of, well, we've got to have a meeting. Let's be, it'll be an hour, and then it'll be over after 61 minutes, and we'll go along our way. Rather, I'm, I'm going to really learn something from this. In an improv scene, we try and say, how is your character, the character you're playing in the scene, altered during the course of the scene? What has she or he learned? If you imagine your conversations in business and your meetings were like that, what would change? Many conversations in business tend to be, well, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. Well, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. Well, good, now I know what I think. <laughs> and the, the worst kind of listening, non-intentive listening, is simply waiting for your turn to speak. Or as a friend of mine uh, who does a lot of, sort of conflict management, uh, the, the worst kind of listening is not listening in boardrooms. It's simply reloading. <laughs> simply reloading. Okay, who here, let's just see, in your airport, who had, um, did you end up in some wonderful holiday exotic location? <laughs> you, you're laughing. Is that because you did or because, no, you're saying, I did, it was in my head, but these schmucks around me failed dismally. <laughs> Where, a lady in orange, are you in orange? I think it's, yes. You were going like this with the, the most obvious body language. So uh, what, was, what was the story that happened for you? Shout it out because we don't have a mic near you. We tried the best baggage Devon. Devon. Okay, so you ended up somewhere nice. Who never even got to the airport? <laughs> Down here. Who was at the airport but was frustrated or actually delighted because you spent the whole time shopping in duty free? <laughs> Who here, yes, there you are, hello. There you are, thank you. Who here experienced a delay? Yeah, I find that when I work with international groups who, who travel a lot, the first thing is, there's a, in their story, a delay. These sort of, these assumptions, you know, as soon as you say airport, there's a kind of, you go straight to, oh, delay. Or airport, who had a terrorist incident? <laughs> Quite a few, because what's the third thing you do at the airport? Take off your belt, take off your shoes. There's a little embedded you know, instruction, terrorism. <laughs> so you see, it's, it's wonderful to, to discover that a man called uh, Daniel Kahneman, have you heard of him? Thinking fast and slow. Somebody said no, thank you for being honest. Uh, most of us haven't read the book, but we've asked somebody who has. Uh, uh, thinking fast and slow. So system one versus system two. System one, you don't think about it. Four times three is... <laughs> Twelve. Thank you, Helen. Okay. You don't even think, so I sit on that chair? Yes, I'll sit on that chair. The old technology to Mark Stevenson. You don't even think about it, the old technology. I'll sit on the chair. System two, what do we do with the National Health Service in this country in terms of times of austerity? Or 492 times 397. You have to break it down into chunks. You have to work it out. Sit down. In fact, I was doing this once with a group, and after about five minutes, the man put his hand up and told me the answer to that. <laughs> which I loved because he couldn't not think about it. <laughs> Do you see? And I wonder how many times of our conversations, how, much, how many offers we're giving out and the person picks up one. That's why Karen Pine was right. How much of this are you going to remember on Monday? You don't even remember the number, do you? <laughs> she said, you'll forget 98%. So I'm going to damn well make sure the 2% you do remember is intentive listening. I'm, you're intending to listen and link what you say to what somebody has just said. It's the best way to create something together, to co-create, the best way to create rapport, the best way to deal with an, a negotiation situation, extra street hall. Are you really listening or are you just preparing your rebuttal? So let's go back to you, Ian. System one, system two. Was Nick, Nickers was system two, wasn't it? You were thinking, this needs a bit of jazzing up, this story. It's a bit boring. I'll throw it a system, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a meta thought. Is that right, Ian? Yeah. Because you said we're all a bit rebellious. Whereas there might have been some system ones. Who here had a system one where they just said a thing? You didn't, I don't know why it came out like that. <laughs> Does anyone have that kind of feeling? Yeah? What, what, any particular words? You there. You're waving at me nicely with, yeah. with hot dog, which is actually two words. <laughs> or did somebody say hot, then dog? So hot dog. 
Okay, and uh, do you then go, well, why do you say hot dog? What's that got to do with anything? Shaking Stevens. Shaking Stevens. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> yes. Our visitors, visitors from America are saying, what the hell is this? <laughs> Shaking Stevens. He was a kind of cut price Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Is that fair? I don't know. OK, so we have eight and a half minutes. I want you to go back to your groups now and just work out what the assumptions were. Why were you thinking that? Why didn't you say the thing I wanted you to say? You're weird. I'm right. That's basically the emotional machine that's trying to do some thinking. That's where we start with, I'm right, I'm consistent, I'm rational. Why the hell don't the rest of the world fit into me and my way of thinking? But that's what we've seen a lot about today, about how we fit into other people's way of thinking. If I can get into your mindset, then I'd, surely I'd double my brain capacity, don't I? So this is the idea about attention, intention, attitude. Our attitude is to say, I really want to pick up what I'm hearing from you and build on it. My intention is to be fully attending to what you're saying. And from that, you'll never be short of creativity. You'll never be short of ideas because you're saying, it's all coming from you. I love the African word, Ubuntu. Do anyone know this word? You're waving at me. You're, you're in the Nickers Airport thing. Do you know what, what does Ubuntu mean? It means I can only do it my best when you're at your best, and you can only do your best when I'm at my best. I don't know if everyone heard that, so I'll give you the mic, but you've got a pretty good voice, so you don't really need it. But what's your name? Miranda. Miranda, come up here and just say it, because I've got a slightly shorter version, but I want to hear all your one in case I'm sued by it. It's an African saying that says, I can only be at my best when you're at your best, and you can only be at your best when I'm at my best. So there's... Uh, mutual accountability. Brilliant. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, I, I thought it was something like, I am because of you, but that may be another word. And then <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you could lay that down for, as a soundtrack for me, I'll use that next time on my phone. Just go back to your group and find out what were you thinking. Why did you say that? Why didn't you say the thing I wanted you to say? Okay. You can think about it as well. Okay. Okay, so we have just a few minutes left. Anybody want to tell me they've suddenly had an inspiration as to why somebody else said a thing, which at the first they thought, you're sabotaging my story. And they realized, oh, right, you had your own story. Have you realized that now? And of course, the, the joy is sometimes when our stories collide and commune and we create something above ourselves. Any, anything interesting insights now where you thought, why is that person, lady there, yes. Shout it out. We realized it partway through that some of the things that make you go a bit slow, obviously thinking before you speak, they must have been spontaneous. It was, do we have this abandonment? Yes. So Just keep saying that. <laughs> okay, so, so of course we have our different languages. Just finish your thought then. And we have one here in England, and th that would be quite an interesting Yes, we, exactly we do have a game where you speak gibberish to each other. Absolutely. You just go, because you're playing the body language, the emotion. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to say goodbye to Carol and Nancy. Thank you. Give them a big round of applause. <laughs> you're waiting. You. Helen. Okay. This is a very dangerous thing to do. We have four minutes, 10 seconds, and Helen and I are gonna do a, a little one-word story for you, but the story is gonna be of today. <laughs> you see she's not a plant. <laughs> so we're gonna do it as if we, we, I say. So why don't you start with, this is just kind of all, bringing it all together beautifully, the, the summary of the day, <laughs> which is a really terrible exercise to do, by the way, because if you're focusing on the process and the content, it's really hard. So we'll just go with it. We'll see what happens. We'll just remember some of the themes. We'll just let our mindfulness for a moment think about all the things we remember. There we go. Okay. We. Enjoyed. Food. We. Loved. The. Talks. I. Felt. Excited. Inspired. By. Everyone. Especially. 
<laughs> me. You. Maybe. Will. Remember. Everything. 98. Percent. Of. All. Content. Tomorrow. We. Will. Forget. Nothing. <laughs> thank you very much, Helen. Thank you. Big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brilliant. Right. Helen, we have just witnessed brilliance, haven't we? So remember, remember Laurie? Laurie said witness brilliance. And witness in the kind of almost uh, old-fashioned sense, witness, bear witness to notice, acknowledge. How many times do we do that? Normally it's, well, this is a bit rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> do you mind if I just tell you uh, something you've done wrong? And uh, there's a really fantastic neuroscience model called the SCARF model. The website is SCARF360, where they looked neuroscience, SCARF360. Neuroscience looked at what makes you stressed in these kind of social situations rather than out in the jungle being attacked by a tiger or a zebra. And they found that it, it brings up the same fear when, when certain things happen, when your status, your certainty, your autonomy, relatedness, fairness are under attack. And they, f they found out that somebody saying to you, um, do you mind if I give you some feedback? Is as stressful as being, as walking at nighttime and hearing footsteps behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to be nice, and yet we're not being. And so you could see how here, this is not about being nice to each other. The idea of an offer is, oh, you're nice, you're right, yes, we acquiesce. It's accepting the offer, listening and linking. Uh, and I also wanted to about live the question. I love the idea that Laurie said, live the question. I think it's a quote from Rainer Maria Rilke, isn't it? Beautiful. That we, we, we may happen upon the answers if we live the questions. Keep living the questions. You could see in your stories how much volatility there was, wasn't there? Complexity and uncertainty. At any point, the story could have gone anywhere. But hold together. Trust the process. Improv is about listening and saying, okay, it may be a mess right now, but together we will create something. And look at what we really have, inspiring about the makers, of course. Uh, I love the idea of the 15 stones. The fi we, we'll never quite know where it's going. And there is a quote, apparently, from Picasso. He said, how do, you how do you sculpt a lion? He said, it's easy. I take some stone, and I get rid of all the bits that aren't lion. <laughs> and often the process tells us the tells us. And this is what Jerry Sternin said, the positive deviance founder. He said, you can't think your way into a new way of acting you can act your way into a new way of thinking. So you've got to get up and do this. Karen's right. We all may sit there, write lo lovely tweets and notes. Oh, yes, I took lots of notes. You've got to do something about it. I've got to do something about it. And there is meaning in our work. There is meaning in our lives. Thank you very much indeed.